Not sure that I ever officially made a decision to be an advocate. I think it's something that happened naturally over time. Bill and I decided to foster after we had our own first child and through that experience of, of being a foster parent with the state, I came to realize that um, we could help individual children, but that if we were going to help more children, that we had to get at the root causes of some of the things that were going wrong for children and families in our state. I was in attendance one day at a court hearing um, that had to do with the birth mother and child, and we took care of the matter with the juvenile court judge and saw that the child's best interests were taken care of. But when we left the courthouse that day, on the opposite, standing on the opposite corner of the street from my, my husband and myself was this young birth mother, and I realized that not only had she been in the courtroom by herself, but she had been by herself altogether. And um, I think it was then that I, I truly understood for the first time that it was more than about helping the individual child, that it really was about helping the whole family. I want to support the people who um, are involved day to day. That's what they do best. And I think what I do best is to help with organizational efficiency, uh, fundraising, cheerleader, um, whatever. I, I have that positive attitude and I think we can get things done. Um, but I think the real heroes, the people that are out there working for children every day, um, they need that support because obviously their talents are in an, could be in another area than mine. We're both in the business of keeping kids in school and um, people frequently ask me, why do kids drop out? And the answer to that is never one thing. And if we aren't prepared to meet kids and uh, figure out where they are at and what their individual needs are, and that's going to be a range of issues, and be able to respond in a holistic way, then we shouldn't expect to see a big change in the dropout issue. A lot of the elected officials are looking for direction. They really do. In our, our case, I think most of them really want to do a great job and really want to make an impact. One of the things that we extend from our work with parents is just the same attitude and presumption when we go and talk with uh, elected officials because they're looking for the kind of specificity that can really make a difference in the lives of children as a whole and not just compartmentalizing the issues. Cooperative Extension is very committed to helping families improve their lives through education, through community-based education. Obviously, many of the challenges that Georgia's children and families have today revolve around the care of children, uh, the public will to support positive outcomes for children. And through education, Extension is working every day to improve those outcomes. One of the things that I'm proudest of working with Cooperative Extension is the fact that we do help families advocate for themselves and we help use research generated at universities to help families make better decisions about caring for themselves. So in that regard, we do advocate for strong families and the policies that will support strong families. I guess one of the changes that I'm proudest of, uh, having played a part in, certainly not solely responsible for, is, is our work around uh, child passenger safety. Um, traffic crashes are the number one killer of children from age one up through about age 34. So I decided early on with what we were learning from research about what could be done to minimize that, we've made some dramatic strides in Georgia and nationwide in the last 20 years or so to where back when I began, fewer than 20% of children were riding in child safety seats. Now almost 90% in Georgia are safely restrained and hundreds of lives have been saved, thousands of injuries prevented, millions of dollars saved just from that change in parents' behavior. I think that's one of the things that I have the greatest sense of accomplishment about is that we have definitely raised the awareness and, and caused the community to accept ownership for, our, for changing things uh, on behalf of children. Public servants and politicians are much more aware of children's issues today than they were 20 years ago. What still needs to be changed though is the allocation of resources and understanding that um, we have to help children uh, before, they, uh, before they ever come into care, we have to help families in a different way. I think our community has become more aware of children's issues, especially um, about child abuse and neglect. It's still a difficult subject because people just generally don't like to talk about it, they don't like to hear about it. 
So it's, uh, it's a movement that really takes a lot of effort. Uh, but I think slowly and, and with um, laws being passed that it's become more of a subject that people are aware of. When it comes to being a child advocate, I think it's important to recognize that each of us has a role to play in whatever particular job role we have, uh, the way we live our lives, speaking up when there's an opportunity to speak up for people who can't speak up for themselves. So while some folks get recognized for their work, the real work, I think, goes on by the thousands of people around the state who are doing important work every day. In order to be a child advocate, I think you need to look at the big picture. Certainly, we need to focus on individuals, and we need to see that individual. We have a saying in communities and schools that, that says that kids respond to people, not to programs. If a child is in trouble, chances are those reasons permeate and are all over the state. And so, how do we address that, not only as a, at a personal level, but how can we address that at a broader corporate level? Maybe through legislation, maybe through engaging other groups, such as a network of churches or more than, more than one, to begin to take these problems on and see them as opportunities to create change and hope for a lot of people. Some funders love to uh, see children as health issues or reading issues or juvenile justice issues. In our experiences, they're just kids and they're not really problems at all in themselves. The problems come from how we as adults uh, choose to do deal with children. Being an advocate for children is extremely rewarding. Um, personally, it provides a great sense of satisfaction that you are helping to improve lives, you're making families' situations better. Um, I would encourage them to put their toe in the water. The first thing that I think you have to do when you interact with people in the public sector is you have to understand all the competing priorities that they have. And you have to come to them with a well-reasoned argument, a, a case for what you want to be done. And I think you have to be equipped yourself to equip them to be successful in helping you. So you ha they have to understand the facts and the figures, but you also have to put a face on what the need is. And um, that's easy when you're working to support children because children's faces in and of themselves uh, make the case. I think the people that work with children every day and care about their welfare and their uh, and their success, their educational success, their, um, their family environment. I mean, again, I think they are the real heroes. I think the most important issue for children is um, prevention of their endangerment, whether it be child abuse, neglect, um, sexual abuse, and that sort of thing. If you um, are proactive rather than reactive, I think the work gets done much better. I would tell the children of Georgia today that, again, being a mom or a dad is the hardest job we've ever had to do. And we're not perfect and we're not always right, but we generally do the things we do because we love our children. However, it's never okay for children to be abused or neglected. and. If they feel in danger, they need to seek an adult that they trust and tell them. I would tell the children of Georgia to look forward. Uh, we can't change the past, either our actions or those of others, but we can look forward and control our futures. And I would also tell the children of Georgia that they are cared for, that they are loved beyond their immediate family, that there are adults in our state who are watching out for their best interests.